This is the video tour of chapter seven and our topic this week is family partnerships. This video will show you what to do as you work through the presentation independently. Uh, you'll notice that this presentation has a slide that asks a question and then you'll get answers on the following slides. So we first ask, who is your family? And we'll start with an open ac opening activity where I want you to think about your own family and then I want you to share a photo of your family on our Padlet board right here at this link. What do families look like today? We have some statistics for you to read. And then we want to watch the video on the left. It's from the show Modern Family. It's going to uh, just kind of give you a glimpse at diversity of families, uh, even though it's a TV family. I want you to answer these questions as you watch the video. How are the families in the video diverse? And then, what other ways will students in your classroom have diverse families? Jot down these answers, and this will be a Dropbox for participation activity. How do families affect development? We're going to look at two different learning theories, Bronfenbrenner's ecological model. You can read the slide and click on the Listen and Learn uh, podcast to really understand how this model works. And then I want you to think about how to apply Bronfenbrenner's ecological model to your own life. And you're going to share an example on the Padlet board for participation. The second learning theory we're going to look at is uh, Bowen's family systems theory. And you can read about it on the right and then watch the video to explain it in more depth. The next question, how are families at risk? And you can read about the risk factor factors on the left uh, and check out some of the statistics on the right. One of those big risk factors is poverty. So I want you to look more in depth at poverty. And again, looking at the slide that gives us the um, data statistics is kind of important to see. How can teachers create reciprocal relationships with families? First of all, we're going to define a reciprocal relationship. And then we're going to look at the role of the teacher and the role of the parent. And then as you read this slide, I'd like you to read the role of the teacher on the left and then kind of look at what the match is in this specific area. So we look at number one, the teacher really has a short-term relationship with the child and the parent has a lifetime relationship. So kind of follow across as you read to compare the differences between teacher and parent. And we need to keep these in perspective as we work with families. Next, we're going to look at family-centered practice. And this is the philosophy that you want to enter into as you have a, an early childhood program. Um, and family-centered practice is you know, where we're putting the family first in um, not only our learning experiences, but also in you know, the, the mindset as we plan our instruction. There are five principles of partnerships with families, and they're basically self-explanatory. If you want to look at those a little more in depth or you have any question about them, their textbook does a very nice job of explaining them. With every relationship, there are barriers. So we're going to look at um, how are some barriers, um, how are some barriers to, that doesn't quite make sense. Let's fix that. Um, what are some barriers? There we go. What are some barriers to effective communication? Uh, first of all, we have communication barriers. I want you to listen to the podcast at the top. That will give you a lot of um, explanation to the information on this slide. Then we're going to look at strategies for ex effective communication to overcome those barriers. So we have just some uh, tips. There's four tips to making families feel welcome in your classroom. Then we're going to talk about the kind of messages you use with families. There are two kinds of messages. Listen to the podcast and I can give you lots of information um, in access to what is on this slide. So really make sure you listen to that podcast. There are also three main communication styles. Um, and so read about each one of those, and then you're going to do a try it out on the next slide. I want you to jot down your answers. There's three communication types at the top, and then three examples. I want you to match them up and Dropbox it to me. How do we keep families involved? We do that through daily communication and weekly communication, and this slide gives you lots of examples of the kind of um, communication you're going to do both daily and weekly. Um, the information, the more you communicate with them, the better that the, your relationship can be. Um, and there's no confusion when you're communicating often. 
how can teachers have successful conferences? So we're moving into parent conferences. And first we want to look at the benefits, and there's four main benefits. Then we're going to look at the planning stages. There's three main planning stages. I just wanted to share that there is a parent teacher conference folder on D2L for week seven. And all, all of the forms shared for parent teacher conferences are on there. So if you'd like to save them, they're you know, a great place to start when you do your own conferencing. After you plan the conferences, you're going to conduct the conference. And there's three main uh, procedures for conducting the conference. That's getting your space ready, how you speak to the family, and then listening. So read about those very carefully. Then we're going to do a try it out. You have been learning all about conferences between what you read in the book and the information on these slides. I want you to look at the three pictures. Photo one is right here. Photo two is here. Photo three is here. I want you to choose one of those photos. Then analyze the photo for a positive you think is going on in the conference and a negative. And then how would you improve that negative? Then go to Padlet by using the link right here where it says Padlet Board and share your answers. Next area is when should teachers visit the family at their home? Instead of having parent-teacher conferences at the school or even a neutral place, sometimes we want to do that home visit. So there's two kinds of home visits. There's the teacher home visit where you're involving the family in that reciprocal relationship. And then there's the home-based program where this is more periodical. You come on a weekly basis or a monthly basis and you're helping teach parents something while you're there. It's more active. Um, and then there's some guidelines for home visits on the right. What is family engagement? So we're going to talk about how we engage the families in our classroom. And family engagement is basically family involvement, but it's boosted to the next level. It's even better. And so we look at a continuum, uh, families with low involvement, families with high involvement, and then the highest stage is parent engagement. And so read about each of those levels. And then we're going to see the benefits of engaging families. And there are six main benefits. The last uh, area of our presentation this week is how do we engage these families? What are some opportunities? And I'm going to allow you to explore this. Now your textbook gives some examples, and so you can read on pages 226 to 228. But then I have some great online resources for you, and so I'd like you to click on each of the phones. It'll take you to a link. Browse through that link and come up with some ideas that you really like. Um, we have two articles and a Pinterest board. And then when you've found some things that you've liked, go onto our Padlet board and share um, not only the idea, but if there's any links or photos, do that as well. Our last main activity is for you to watch the video on the right. And this is a program for children ages 1 to 5. It is not in the United States. Um, it's it's a, an England program, um, but it really has a different mindset. You'll notice right away this doesn't look like a lot of the programs we have in the U.S. And unfortunately, a lot of countries are ahead of us when it comes to family engagement, and this is why. So I want you to watch the video and then share one or more ways this program is successful at engaging parents. What are they doing that's working to engage parents? Um, we end our presentation with some information. First of all, we have a new project this week, and this is our newsletter project. So head over to D2L when you're ready. Open up the project handout for newsletter, and there's a rubric attached to that project. Have that handout ready as you watch this project information or introduction video. Just a um, quick reminder, the project is due March 28th, which is not... Um, this coming week, It's you have two weeks for the project. So uh, just make sure that... Um, I'm sorry, you probably do have a week for the project. Um, check, check your calendar, you'll know. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm ahead when I make your videos, I'm ahead, so I don't, I sometimes get off. So just check your due date, March 28th. All right, next, probably most important is what are the weekly requirements for assignments? So first of all, we had five Padlet boards this presentation. I listed the slides there for each one. Make sure that you participate in each of those. You have um, two activities to Dropbox, and I have the slides listed for those as well. 
you will not receive all of your participation points unless you've completed all of these activities for the week. So I go through with a checklist and I make sure that we have quality participation. Please make sure on those Padlet boards that you're following directions. Um, some of the Padlet boards in the last couple weeks, people are not following the directions and they're not receiving points for their board if they didn't follow the directions. Also is to read chapter eight to get you ready for next week's topic and start that parent newsletter and finish your Montessori observation. Both are due on March 28th. So again, check your calendars. That's it. That's the tour. Enjoy chapter seven.